So how do I get Stussy to bite me like that? Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with episode 1105 of One Piece. And yeah, last time we finally got the big reveal, which wasn't really hard to see coming. Like, in the manga, I feel like this would be a lot harder because obviously you don't have voice acting. But in the anime, it's like this was very easy to see coming because it's like you have Vegapunk calling to this, this secret extra ally they have. And you hear Stussy's voice over the Den Den Mushi. In the manga, there was nothing to, like, showcase that. Unless the manga has, like, Stussy's uh, text written in a very specific font or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's the only way that you would have, I feel, to uh, make people know that was Stussy. I mean, some people probably guessed it, I'm sure. But, like... There was no way to really know otherwise. The voice absolutely gave it away. Like, absolutely. Um, but I don't mind that. I, I don't think it needed to be this big mystery for a few episodes. Um, meanwhile, Bonnie is going to start learning the truth because she's found Kuma's memories because we find out that Kuma's abilities can not only, uh, like, eject pain from the body, but memories as well. So she's going to find out the truth regarding uh, her father through that, even though Vegapunk really doesn't want her to because he's kind of being an asshole right now. I'm being completely honest. I'm, Vegapunk's obviously not a bad guy. Quite the opposite. But he's kind of being an asshole here. Like, I'm sorry, I get that you promised Kuma to keep her safe and that you wouldn't like let her see this and everything but she has every right to know with everything that's gone on with everything she's clearly been through with all of her like emotional pain she has a right to know and that honestly like exceeds your duty to keep your friend's secret safe here his daughter's uh need to know here is more important like that's that's just the case I, I i again i get why he's doing it but he's absolutely in the wrong for doing it and i i very much am excited for her to see what's going on but this does mean that cp0 is taken down for the time being um, with Stussy revealing herself as an ally, she has taken down Luchi and Kaku, and they're probably going to be bound up at this point. Unfortunately, we do know that Kizaru is on his way. We do know that he's coming towards Egghead, and that's, you know, not going to be very good. Um, though I do kind of wonder how he's going to react to finding out that, uh, that, um, Oh my god, what is his name? Sentomaru. I wonder how he's going to react to Sentomaru being, like, so gravely injured. Because he and Sentomaru, like, are very well bonded. I, I, I know Sentomaru called him uncle in Shibandi, but I don't know if, like, they're actually related. Or if it's more like a, uh, just term of endearment. Um, like, sometimes happens with a lot of, uh, manga and anime. Because that's a thing in, you know, Japan. With the Japanese language and all. I don't know if it's legit or just more endearment. But either way, it's clear that these two are close. So I, I wouldn't think he would like finding out that CP0 did that. Um, I don't see him switching sides, though. So I, I don't know exactly how that's going to go down. Um, but we know that, uh, Zoro has gotten involved now because he was fighting Kaku, so he's gonna find out everything that's been happening. Things are really progressing. And there's still quite a bit to go, right? Because, like, I, I believe the manga's, like, finishing Egghead, but it's still in Egghead at the moment. 
haven't. So it's like there's still quite a bit to go here. Um, I, I've been enjoying this. I, I, I believe I said it last time. I don't like it as much as like Wano. But Wano was special. Wano was something like really special for this series. So I, I didn't really expect to like it on the same level. Um, but for what it is, I've been really enjoying it, and I, I'm really liking a lot of the reveals we're getting, and I'm excited to see where all of this goes. So, we're gonna get into this and not really waste any more time. But before we do, just a little more wasting time, as I remind you that we have a lot of great content to check out on this channel. Every Monday through Friday, we have a plethora of awesome series reactions, and on Mondays, we also do YouTube, or YouTube adjacent at least, reactions. Um, basically, anything that doesn't fit into a normal series or movie reaction. And speaking of movies, we do those every Saturday and Sunday. Movie reactions are recorded earlier in the week, but uploaded on the weekend so that every day has something going for it. We're also currently going through a couple different Let's Plays on the channel. Every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, we're playing Spider-Man 2. And although there are some audio issues in the first nine parts, especially parts five through nine, um, those are pretty much all completely fixed by part 10. And everything from that point forward should be all good. Um, but we are also playing through Anno Mutationum on Saturdays. This is a donation reward let's play for Matthew Vasquez. And if you want to know all about donation reward let's plays and how you well, donate for those. Um, just check out uh, the videos on the channel, PS5 Game Reward Month, uh, and that should give you all the information you need. But you could also go down to the comments below and ask, or go to the Discord server and contact me directly on there. Whatever you feel most comfortable with doing. Um, that all being said, though, we're going to get on with this and see what this episode of One Piece has in store for us. So... When the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction because yes, I do redirect all reactions on this channel. I know you might not want to click another link just to get to the video itself, but you have to understand, you, you know how YouTube is. YouTube is shit with its copyright issues and I don't want to deal with the possibility of channel strikes or God forbid having the channel terminated. I've dealt with that before, and it's not fun. I really don't want to deal with it again. So just to save all of that pain and worry, I push everything off onto a different site. All you have to do is go down to the description below and click the link to go there. And on the upside, this means that all of you, yes, every single one of you watching, gets to see the full unedited reaction for completely free. No paywalls, no Patreons, and you don't even have to sync up your own copy. I think that's pretty awesome, honestly. Um, not every channel on this, on this website does that, because in a lot of ways they can't. Yeah, they have to make money. I don't have to worry about that, so <laughs> um, you can just, uh, you, everyone gets to see the full unedited reaction for free. All you have to do is go down to the description below and click the link to follow it over. And after you watch it, you can come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after fades black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain not only spoilers to the episode, but just my general thoughts on what happened within it, as well as the series and other things like that. I might even talk about stuff related to the channel, so it's always worth it to check out out just in case that all being said though as always thank you so so much for tuning in and i will see you at the reaction and we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in three two one now so so with that ending reveal real quick uh definitely have to talk about that first I thought he was going to have Weevil on the ship because they kind of like, because Weevil was taken away by the uh, Navy and everything. So I'm thinking, oh, Kizaru's going to have Weevil? Why? Like, what is the purpose? Stu Buckingham Stussy, uh, she did say that um, 
that Weevil was, uh, could be confirmed to be Whitebeard's son by Vegapunk, so that could be why they want to confirm that one way or the other. Um, which still could be the case, but no. Um, Jagarsha Saturn, apparently, is his name. Um, I don't think we ever got any of their names before. So I think that's new. But I did... <laughs> I don't know how I didn't know he was going to be in this, but it actually makes a lot of sense because I did hear, I, I haven't seen what they are, but I did hear that the powers of the Gorosei have been revealed. Um, I don't actually know what the powers are though, or even if I had seen something, I, I must have forgotten because I don't know. Um, if I did see something, it was, like, briefly in scrolling. As, as, for as much as I do get spoiled on, for as many things as I just, unfortunately, am unable to avoid, I am very surprised this wasn't one of them, because I feel like this would have been, like, kind of everywhere. Like, we knew Kizaru was going to Egghead, but the fact that, that Saturn, one of the Gorosei, is going to Egghead, that, I feel, is a much bigger deal. <laughs> I don't think he's in the opening, is he? Like, that's a huge deal. Because it's like the Gorosei are, are basically, outside of uh, Emu, the leaders of the world government. And they are absolutely, without question, amongst the strongest characters in this series. What the fuck? <laughs> Like, you're just going to drop that on us? And just going to... Just just going to, like, basically tell us right here and now that Egghead is fucked? Like, I'm sorry. I don't even think Luffy can handle a Gorosei right now. E even with his, like, godlike powers, I don't think he's strong enough. He's not practiced enough with them. He's not, like... He's not strong enough to take on a Gorosei. I just... I genuinely don't think he is. Like, the Gorosei, I would put on the same level as Shanks. And Shanks is, like, kind of peak. Shanks and Mihawk are around the same level. We know this for a fact. Um, I believe Blackbeard is, like, just under Shanks. Like, basically one step under. It's like, that is how strong I, I see the Gorosei as. And honestly, I, I could imagine them even maybe being a little stronger in some ways than Shanks. So we're already getting them involved? At least one of them? Jesus, fuck. On top of that, um... We also see in this episode that Weevil and Miss Buckin saved uh, Whitebeard's hometown and the people within it from the corruption of the Navy, which that's great to see. And Marco really appreciated it as well. Um, as for the entire thing about whether or not Weevil is actually the biological son of Whitebeard, like I said, I'm just kind of on the fence about it. It's like I could very much see it being true. But I could also very much see it not being true. But also, like, I don't necessarily think Miss Buckin would have a reason to lie about it, would she? Like, this is a former member of the Rocks Pirates, a former member of Mads. It's like, why would she need to lie about this, like, for attention or... or notoriety or anything like that like what would be the point of that I, I just I don't quite get why she would need to do that and even and if it were the case then who the fuck would he be like is he like, like would he be another clone <laughs> it's like just that would raise a lot more questions I don't know, uh, but she claims that Vegapunk can confirm it for her and, sh and, and like, tell everyone, which is definitely what the Navy and world government is going to want. But at the same time, if Vegapunk is the one who can 
confirm this, then the fact that they want Vegapunk dead kind of goes against that. It's contradictory. So either they would need to take him alive at least temporarily in order to get this confirmed and then kill him, or they see killing him as more vital in importance. And that that's going to, like, be more of a priority than finding out whether Weevil is or is not Whitebeard's son. And we didn't get any Bonnie and Vegapunk in this episode. We didn't get anything with the memories. That's unfortunate. And, and by Vegapunk, I mean Stella, of course. We obviously got plenty of Vegapunk in this episode, technically, but... Uh, we got confirmation that even when the when a Vegapunk starts giving the order, or I guess anyone, they will not stop and switch their programming over until the order is finished being given. So even as the order is started, they will still attack, and we know they're fast, so they can attack really quickly in that in that period of time. This is just. This is really interesting. Things are taking a step forward. And it sucks that next week is Memorial Day. <laughs> so if you don't know, here in the U.S., uh, next Monday is Memorial Day. And that does mean my father is going to be home. Uh, probably going to be having a barbecue and stuff. You know, yada yada, that jazz. But that means I won't be able to get to One Piece next Monday. And after a big reveal like this with uh, St. J. Garsha Saturn, that's going to hurt. <laughs> that's going to suck ass. The only thing I could hope for is maybe that next week would be off, because occasionally there will be off weeks for One Piece. But I doubt that's going to happen. Like, why would it be off during a American holiday week? Um, it's been off for, like, holidays in Japan, but... You know, that's, that makes more sense. Um, so I'm probably going to have to get to it either next Tuesday or just hold off a week. But I don't think I'm going to be able to hold off a week. So I'll probably get to the next episode next Tuesday instead of Monday. Um, just because I won't be able to get to it on Monday. Um, that also probably means next week won't have a YouTube reaction. Just because it, I, I don't think I'm going to put that off until Tuesday as well. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know about that ahead of time. So Stussy's going to be coming with them as well, going forward, the clone of Stussy, technically. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to refer to her as Stussy. I'm going to refer to the other, the, the original as Miss Buckin. I, I, I think that's just the easy way to separate them at this point. <laughs> um... So Stussy's going to be coming with the crew and with the Vegapunks and all, which makes sense. I mean, obviously. We got uh, CP0 cuffed. And we actually find out that Stussy's been undercover for Vegapunk for 20 years. Apparently it wasn't intended, but it just kind of happened. We, I, I kind of want to know more about that. And I, I'm very curious to know more about just the cloning thing. Because Stussy's been in CP0 for 20 years, right? Has she aged in that time? Do clones age in the same way that humans do? Because if not... And mind you, I think the world government would probably know based on the name anyway. Then they would have to know that she is a clone of... Miss Buckingham Stussy, which means they would know about the connection with Vegapunk. Which makes me question is if they if they knew how was this betrayal a surprise? Because I, I feel like they would be cautious about the idea that uh that she would be working with CP0 when she has a connection with Vegapunk from their time in Mads. Even if she's a clone, she's still basically the same person. 
Also, that's really interesting too for Whole Cake. Because Stussy was first introduced in Whole Cake as the Queen of the Pleasure District at Big Mom's tea party. And I believe Big Mom had an interaction with her. The thing is, Big Mom would know her directly because they were both, her, Big Mom and the original Stussy were both in the Rocks Pirates together. So she absolutely would fucking know who Stussy is. And she would absolutely fucking know that this Stussy is a clone of the original. Oh, this race has a lot of questions about, like, other people's connections to her and stuff. I, I didn't even think about the connection with Big Mom until now. <laughs> Interesting. Very interesting. Um, and I mentioned in the reaction, I like how Brooke was, like, very into her, but not in the way he usually is. Like, when Brooke sees a pretty girl, he usually is like, may I see your panties and everything. It's kind of, it, it's the recurring joke with him. Where it's not like, it's not gross like Sanji can be sometimes. It's not quite to that degree. It's a little gross, but it's it's more like just a casual joke thing. Where it's like, he's not being super perverted about it, but he's just like, you know, light perversion. <laughs> it's still perverted and everything, but it's nowhere near to the level that Oda goes with Sanji. And... Instead, when it comes to her, he was just like, he, he was like simping, but not not in like a perverted way or anything. He was just like really into her, it seemed. It's like the heart thumping and everything. It's like, oh, no, it's like there's, he actually, I think, like just genuinely likes her. Not as like actually like lusting after her or like anything. Because he never even brought up the can I see your panties thing. And it's like, she's, she like asked him, it's like, are you scared of me? He's like, in a couple ways. And it's like, my dude, I am very much vibing with you right now. <laughs> it's like, okay. I, I did not know I was going to relate to Brooke in this episode of all characters, but here we are. Um... And it was brought up to me last time. It's like that the entire biting thing would probably just hurt and it wouldn't like be as sexy as you think it would be. It's like, I understand that. I, I very much get that. Um, I think anyone would, but at the same time, it's like the way it's portrayed in the media is in such a sexy way that it's like, <laughs> when I say like, oh, I wish she would bite me in that way or, or whatnot. It's like, I'm, I more mean it as a joke. I, I don't mean like literally necessarily, because I understand again, that would hurt, but it's like, it's so sexy. And in the moment, I'm just so into it. It's, it's, it's a kink. It's a kink that is like kind of more directly, um, tied to a fictional series like this. Um, it, it's the same kind of thing. It's the same kind of thing with people having a fetish for vampires. It's like, yeah, of course we understand that a vampire biting you in the neck would hurt. But it's like, that's not what these, these people are into. It's more of the sexual nature of it. And vampires have always been very sexual. That has always been a thing. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's just, it, it, it's a, it's a way of like kind of acknowledging the emotional um, vibes you get from viewing this as a fictional series that you're not actually taking part in. But it's like the action is shown, and it's in this case animated and visualized in such a way that it just, it, it, it's a turn on. And I, I don't mean that in a weird, like, gross way. I mean, just genuinely like as it's meant to be it is meant to entice the viewers 
Stussy is meant to be a sexy character. Queen of the Pleasure District. That's enough evidence right there. She is meant to be an extremely sexy character. And you could tell last time, it's like they were making her biting Lucci's neck specifically very sex sexualized. The way, like, right before she did it, the way she, the, the breath was coming out, or the tongue stuck out to the side. It's like... And even, like, after she had bit Kaku initially, like, she's standing there licking the blood off her lips and everything. It's like... It's meant to be super sexualized like that. Because it's kind of like playing up, to, playing up on the entire vampire sexualization while also just playing off of Stussy's natural uh sexualization as a character it's actually surprisingly a clever way to do it um it, it's a way to integrate the sexuality of a character into the character in a natural way where it doesn't feel like oh oda just made this character sexy for the sake of having a sexy character because oda's horny no it comes across like oda actually gave this sexiness some uh, some thought here um, this is basically what I would say is a example of really well done fan service. It is absolutely sexual fan service. That's just undeniable. But it's well done in the way where it actually benefits the character. It actually gives us a good look into the character, a good look into the the series and everything. It's just it's very well done. To where it feels like it needed to be there and that's rare it's it's actually really rare, rare when fan service is done that well to where it feels like it was necessary um almost unheard of i would even say even in this series especially in this series a lot of the fan service in this series is just there because sexy again ona uh, uh, ona Oda is horny is a joke in the fandom because of how a lot of this fan service is just there for fa the sake of fan service. Like, there's absolutely no reason for a lot of it besides just being sexy. But when it's done this well in certain situations, like here, it's just like, I kind of forgive the bad examples or at least more neutral examples in this series when you have one that's just executed this goddamn well. Um, I would say the only really bad examples of fan service in this series are when it's with underage characters. And I know differences of, you know differences of viewpoints between Japan and America with all of that and everything but still it's like I I it is a, it is morally wrong to me it's just it's a thing that watching anime you're not gonna be able to properly escape all that well and luckily it's not like overwhelmingly prevalent it's just there are certain characters who are like a little too much there oda even if it's mostly just the size of the breasts and stuff it's just like you didn't need to make rebecca look that way <laughs> rebecca's actually a, the biggest uh issue in that regard at least she's a really good character that that helps balance it out a little but but the point I'm making here, like I said, is that Stussy's fan service feels necessary. I feel like her character wouldn't work as well without it. Because of everything that's set up with the depth of who she is and what kind of job she's done and stuff. Um, it just needed to be like this. And this entire reveal actually i think even worked better because of it because it was so well written and so well conceived that it just it was just so well handled so yeah this is one of those only occasions where i'll say the fan service actually felt necessary um and i'm not just saying that just because i find stussy incredibly hot 
Though I do. I very, very much do. <laughs> I think I said it last time. Stussy originally wasn't like top tier sexy One Piece character for me, but she shot up a lot with this. I don't even really have a vampire kink, so it's it's kind of weird that it's just like it this just did something for me. <laughs> uh sometimes it just it just clicks, you know. Uh, but yeah, so I, I really enjoyed this, and I'm really interested to see, like, more, not just with Bonnie, but with, like, Stussy, as well as Miss Buckin, and all of that connection. I'm really hoping we get, like, full-on flashbacks of the entirety of the Rocks Pirates, and how everything went down with that, because we still don't know all the details about how the Rock Pirates fell and all. And I, I very much want to know about the, the Rocks Pirates. That's one of the big mysteries I'm very interested in. Um, it might have been in the manga already. I don't know. But I don't know it, at least. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. There's a lot of great build-up here. I, I, I really can't wait to see where this goes at this point. There's... A lot of great setups and a lot of really scary setups. Still not over St. J. Garcia Saturn. I can't believe I recognized him that quickly. It's like I saw the beard and it's like, oh fuck. <laughs> it's just like instant fear. <laughs> because I understand like how strong the Gorosei have to be. And it's like... That's just insanely scary. Like I am I am very excited to find out what their powers are. Like I like I said, I heard that they were revealed. I just don't know what they actually were. Unless I did just see very briefly and forgot about it because I wasn't paying attention on purpose. Um but yeah. I with ever again, with everything I knew, I'm surprised that's one thing I didn't. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes I even surprise myself with that. Um, either way, either way, uh, I would like to hear your thoughts on this episode. Obviously, no spoilers. Um, I, I've already made it pretty clear in this episode, I feel like, but I, I do get spoiled quite a bit just because the One Piece community often doesn't care. Um, and I see a lot of things on Twitter and other social media just kind of randomly without attempting to and it's like I, I i want to try to remain as spoiler free as i can if i if i end up getting spoiled to something at some point beyond my control then it's it's not really my fault but i'm going to try to be as spoiler free as i can so please no spoilers do not tell me anything about what's coming up um i do not want to know but there is a lot I am very curious about. That being said, uh, <laughs> um, just as a reminder, we have a lot of great content on this channel to check out. Every Monday through Friday, we have a plethora of awesome series reactions. And on Mondays, we also do YouTube, or at least YouTube adjacent reactions. Basically, anything that doesn't quite fit into a full series or a movie reaction is put there. Um, and yeah, speaking of movie reactions, we do two of those each week on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, those are recorded during the week, but I upload them on the weekend just so every day has something going for it. And we are currently also going through a couple Let's Plays on the channel. We're currently going through Spider-Man 2 every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Really been enjoying that one a lot. And we are also going through Anno Mutationum on Saturdays. That is a donation reward let's play for Matthew Vasquez. If you want to know how to do that, just search on the channel for PS5 Game Reward Months, and you should find it without, without too much trouble. Um, you should be able to find all the information in the video, but if you want any clarification from me or want to talk to me directly about it, uh, the best case scenario would be to go onto the Discord server and direct message me. But you could also just ask in the comments if you really want to, it's up to you, whatever you're most comfortable with. 
Um, and I'll let you know on how to get involved with that. Uh, that being said, thank you as always so much for tuning in. Uh, and for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.